Welcome to lecture 15. In this lecture, we will define basic rate law expressions in order to derive integrated rate law expressions. This lecture will be divided into three parts. In part one, we will define how reaction rates are quantified. In part two, we will define what is a reaction order. And finally, in part three, we will derive integrated rate law expressions. Up to this point, we have been using thermodynamics to inform if a process is spontaneous. Thermodynamics' state functions provide a convenient overview of a process, where only the beginning and ending reagents are necessary to get important big picture information. They quantify which direction a reaction will progress and what should be observed at equilibrium. However, they do not give any indication about how fast a process will take to reach equilibrium. The role of chemical kinetics is to inform how fast a process takes to occur. Given that a given process involves multiple steps, proper kinetic analysis requires examining individual reaction mechanisms to gain an overall grasp of a chemical reaction. Kinetics can also quantify equilibrium constants. We will now examine these pathways between products and reactants and the rate at which the conversion occurs in order to give us time-resolved information about the process. In order to discuss reaction kinetics, we must first define how the amount of a substance varies as a reaction progresses. To do so, let's first define a generic chemical process. A moles of A plus B moles of B gives C moles of C plus D moles of D. The number of moles of a species I at a given time, denoted as N sub I, will vary according to Ni naught plus nu I plus zeta where Ni0 is the initial number of moles for species I, nu I is the stoichiometric coefficient of species I, and zeta is the advancement of the reaction. If we were to take the derivative of Ni with respect to time, then we get dNi by dt is equal to nu I times d zeta by dt. d zeta by dt is the speed or the rate at which the reaction progresses. Therefore, if we solve for the rate, we get d zeta by dt is equal to 1 over nu sub i times dni by dt. We can now write an expression for the rate of change of the amount of all four components in the reaction and relate them together since they all share the same reaction rate. This means that the rate of the reaction is equal to negative 1 over a dna over dt, which is also equal to negative 1 over b dnb over dt, which is equal to 1 over c times dnc over dt, and that's equal to 1 over d dnd over dt. In this case, the negative signs we add in explicitly because the reaction as written is a forward reaction. So a and b are being consumed, while c and d are being produced. If instead we want to express these reagent amounts as concentrations instead of with moles, we would then divide through the general expression using the volume of the solution. Still considering the same generalized reaction, the rate at which the concentration of one of the species decreasing, for example A, is governed by the product of the concentrations of all the species that A interacts with raised to some power. This means that the rate is equal to the concentration of A raised to some power x times the concentration of B raised to some power y times some constant of proportionality, in this case, k sub f. k sub f is called the rate constant. The order of each component is the power that each concentration is raised by. In this example, the order of A is x and the order of B is y. The overall order of the reaction is the sum of all the powers. So for this example, it is x plus y. This final point is an important one. The orders are not related to the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced equation. Keep in mind that there may be many reaction steps the reaction takes to go from reactants to products. Some steps are faster than others. The slow steps will dictate the overall rate, and it may not be captured in the overall rate law expression. So, predicting the order based on stoichiometric coefficients is generally problematic. Rate laws are empirical relationships, and so the orders must be verified empirically. Let's now look at a couple of examples in reading the order from some rate law expressions. In this first example, we can simply read the order from the expression. Component A has an order of 2, and component B has an order of 1. 
the total order is 3. In the second example, we can again read the orders from the expression. Component A has an order of 1 half, and component B has an order of 3. The order of a reaction need not be whole integers, so the total order is 7 halves. Number 3 is a bit more complicated. Component E has an order of 1. However, component S has an undefined order, and the total order is also undefined. However, if the amount of S is a lot larger than Km, then the denominator simply becomes the concentration of S. This cancels out the factor of S in the numerator, and the total order becomes effectively equal to 1. Conversely, if S is much smaller than Km, then the denominator will simply be Km. This means that the order of s is effectively equal to 1, and the total order is effectively equal to 2. This final example shows that the order need not be a static value, and the importance of each reagent may change as their concentration changes. Consider this simplified reaction. We start with reactants A, and it goes to products P, with a rate constant of Kf. If we know the order of a reaction, and the initial conditions, we can integrate the rate law expression and predict the concentration of reagents at any time. This integral is written at the bottom of the slide, where the variable x is replaced with the order a. Once we integrate, we can then draw plots, as illustrated on the right, where we can see how the concentration of each reagent changes as a function of time. By doing this, we start to answer the question, how long does a given process take? So let's evaluate these integrals and start to determine what are integrated rate law expressions depending upon what order of the reaction we're looking at. So let's assume that the order of A is 0, which means that if we were to write our rate law expression, we would get minus d concentration of A by dt is equal to kf times the concentration of A raised to the 0th power, which leaves us with just kf, because something raised to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. What we would do is we would rearrange and we'd separate our variables so that we can then integrate easily, which means that I'm going to leave the d concentration of A on the left-hand side. I'm going to write minus kf dt on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to integrate this on the left-hand side. I'm going to integrate from my starting concentration A0 to my concentration at times t, which is just the concentration of A. On my right-hand side, I'm going to evaluate this integral between 0, because at t is equal to 0, I have a naught as my concentration up until time t, where now my, my concentration of a is just that, the concentration of a. If I evaluate the integral on the left-hand side, I have dA. Well, that just becomes the integrand at both um, parts, which means that I'm going to evaluate my fundamental theorem of calculus, which just gives me concentration of a minus concentration of a naught on the right-hand side. I'm going to have my minus kf, which is a constant. dt just becomes t. I evaluate the fundamental theorem of calculus, and I just get t minus 0. And so what I end up with here is I have concentration of A is equal to minus kf times t. And to that, I'm going to move my minus a0 to the other side, so I'm just going to say plus a0. And so this is the integrated rate law expression if I have a zeroth order um, reagent. Now what if the order of our reaction was a first order reaction? So in this case, we would write our rate law expression as minus d concentration of A by dt is equal to our rate constant kf. And then our concentration of A had an order of 1, which means now we actually have to include it in our expression. In this case, I'm going to follow the exact same procedure. I'm going to separate my variables. So I'm going to have d concentration of A over concentration of A, and that's going to be equal to minus kf dt. I'm going to integrate both sides again. I'm going to integrate from my initial concentration of A to my concentration of A at some time t, and that means then on my right-hand side, my integral goes from 0, since my initial condition where my system starts at t is equal to 0, and then evolves to t at some time later t. And when I evaluate this integral, what I end up with is the natural logarithm of concentration of A minus the natural logarithm of the concentration of A naught because I have dA divided by A and so the integral of that is just the natural logarithm of A and now I've just evaluated it with the fundamental theorem of calculus. 
On my right hand side I have minus kf and then dt just becomes t evaluated between t and 0 means I've got t minus 0. And then finally when I finish writing this outer I can basically simplify this expression. I get natural logarithm of the concentration of A over the concentration of A naught equal to minus kf t. I take E or I take the exponent of both sides which leaves me with the concentration of A over the concentration of A naught is equal to E to the negative kf t. And then finally my concentration of A is equal to the concentration of A naught E to the minus kf t. And so here is my integrated rate law expression for a first order type reaction where I only have one component in my rate law expression and that basically this again tells me my concentration of A as a function of time. Finally we'll do this again assuming that the concentration of A has an order of 2 so we're going to have a second order rate law expression in this case. So this is again writing my rate law minus dA by dt is equal to kf concentration of A squared this time because now it's of order 2. I again separate my variables d concentration of A by concentration of A squared is equal to minus kf dt. I'm going to again evaluate my integral, or I'm going to set up my integral, where I'm going to go from A naught to A on the left hand side. I'm going to go from 0 to t on the right hand side. I evaluate this integral. This is essentially saying the integral of 1 over A squared, which is just going to be negative 1 over a, and if I evaluate the integral, then I have negative 1 over the concentration of A minus minus, so I have a plus, 1 over concentration of A naught, and that's equal to minus Kf, and evaluate my integral, the fundamental theorem of calculus, I get T minus 0. And so in this case now I'm just going to rearrange, I'm going to move my minus Kf times T over to the left hand side, my minus 1 over A to the right hand side, so I'm going to have 1 over a naught plus kf t. And I'll write that a little bit better. kf t, and that's equal to 1 over the concentration of A. And so here is my integrated rate law expression for a second order um, process where I can now plot out my concentration of A as a function of time, knowing my initial concentration.